Hey guys, this is Corey here down at Fan Expo, and I am standing here with Sabrina from Ripley's Believe It or Not. How are you today? I'm good, thanks for having me. Hi. We're very excited to be at this booth, at least I am. I love all of the weird and odd things that Ripley's has had, but how, like, can you give us like a brief history for Ripley's? Yeah, for sure. We're actually celebrating our 100th anniversary. So 1918, Robert Ripley wrote the very first Believe It or Not cartoon. It was some unbelievable sports feats and oddities, and it became an overnight sensation. So Believe It or Not then became that household phrase, you know, and he started carrying on the cartoon and traveling all over the world and collecting things to prove to people that his cartoons were real, the people he met were real. So that's really the basis of the Ripley collection these days. And you can see some of those quintessential things here, like this tortoise with a casual hippo tusk lit through it. It lit for 15 years with that hippo tusk speared through it. Jesus. So, yeah. All right, so it's 100 years. That's a lot of odd things, a lot of weird things, and a lot of just interesting things. It's 30,000 tangible things, actually, in our exhibit collection. That is so much. <laughs> yeah. So what, do you, what did you pick to bring to the expo this year? Yeah, so we started collecting some more pop culture exhibits, right? So when you think, believe it or not, it's those unbelievable things, but it's things you can really only see at Ripley's as well. You're not yeah. seeing shrunken heads at like every shop down the street, but yeah. you're also not seeing the hoverboard from Back to the Future. You're not seeing Indiana Jones's whip. You're not seeing Han Solo's blaster, which is actually the most expensive Star Wars piece we have in our collection. I, I can imagine. So, and then there's cool, believe it or not, stories behind it too. Like we have Luke Skywalker's um, lightsaber, but we also have the Graflex camera that it was crafted after. So a lot of people don't know that. I mean, a lot of people here probably do, but you know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what is your favorite exhibit, whether it's here or in one of the other museums, what is your absolute favorite exhibit? I always love the shrunken heads. They're so <laughs> strange. They're so unique to us. We actually have one of the largest privately owned collections of shrunken heads in the entire world. The process is really gnarly and brutal, but it's it, they're pretty unique. And so if those don't gross you out, what does gross you out? What is the one <laughs> gross thing? This hairball right behind me is the grossest thing I think we have. So we featured it in this year's annual book, Century is Strange, and it actually came from a barber in Ohio. He started collecting his client's hair as he cut it. He then donated it to us after we put it in the book, and we have chosen to add to it for some odd reason, and it is <laughs> came to us at about 90 pounds. It's now like 126 pounds, and oh, real gross, and um, oh, I'm assuming that's, smelly. And... That's way too much hair <laughs> for anybody. It is, but you can add to it if you want. We're accepting donations here at Fan Expo. Maybe. <laughs> I have a lot of it. Thank you so much for yeah. talking with us today, Sabrina. Everybody, be sure if you are <laughs> You know waffling between going out to fan expo or not you definitely should and while you're here you should definitely come check out the booth they have some pretty incredible stuff that you can't see anywhere else awesome thank right. you thank you